If you have the Nuna Pippa RX or are thinking about getting it, this video is a must watch. The Nuna Pippa RX has three different ways that you can install it, two of which are with the base itself. So this base has the rigid lower anchor connector feature, which I'm gonna show you in a little bit more detail in a second. That's one way to install the base. Another way to install the base is with the vehicle seatbelt. Now one anomaly with this seat, and it's with the Nuna Pippa series, is that when you use the rigid lower anchors, you are allowed to also use the vehicle seatbelt. This is very rare. So only on the Nuna Pippa series do we see this happen for infant seats. Again, I'm gonna show you that in a minute. The third way to install it is to not use the base at all and to use the carrier portion installed in the car with the vehicle seat belt. As I said, I'm gonna show you all three methods. Let's get familiar with the base first. There are a lot of really great features on the Nuna Pippa base. Let's start with this rigid lower anchor that I was telling you about. So to get them out of their storage location, you just kind of push them down and around so that they're gonna be in position to line up with the lower anchor connector points in the vehicle. You can see that these move up and down so you can line them up easily. So go ahead and get those out. If you have rigid lower anchor connectors as an option on your seat, I want you to use them. Another thing to note on this base is it's got an anti-rebound bar panel here. That's helpful to maintain those crash forces. Less movement for your child is always better. We've got a load leg on the bottom as well. Another safety feature. So we're gonna pop the load leg out to get it ready. Again, something I absolutely want you to use if you have it as a feature on your seat, like this one does. And then another really cool thing about this seat is that the majority of infant bases, you have to install them, get the recline where it's supposed to be, and then check the recline. And oftentimes you have to uninstall to adjust that recline. With the Nuna Pippa, you don't have to do that. You get the base installed, and then you are able to easily kind of use this like rocking chair motion to move it into the recline position required based on the weight of your child. So it's really awesome, install, then adjust the recline. The final thing is for that seatbelt installation method, there is a panel here that you can use to help make that vehicle seatbelt installation method even easier. So those are kind of like the five standout features on the base. Let's get right into installing with the rigid lower anchor connectors. So first thing, my vehicle is set up so that I am ready to install. I've got the vehicle seat back in its most upright position. I went ahead and moved the passenger seat up so that I have plenty of room to move. And my vehicle is on level ground. I've released the load leg from the storage location, but I haven't fully extended it. Now, a word of caution here, Again, load legs, if you have them, use them. They're a great added safety feature, but you need to make sure they're compatible with your vehicle. So there may be some seating positions where a load leg is not permitted to be used. So for example, if you have a vehicle that has stow and go seats, you can't put a load leg in that vehicle seating position. So that may be one of the reasons you choose where you're going to install it. You do need to fully extend the load leg until it reaches the floorboard. Now, here's the other thing I wanna caution you about. This vehicle has some seriously substantial car mats and this could interfere with the load leg because there's an indicator on the bottom of that load leg that needs to sit flush with the vehicle floorboard so your options are like move the vehicle mat up if you know you have room to do that fold it up if you have one that's you know different than this is or in my case I'm going to completely remove it while we're talking about sort of the vehicle setup how do you decide where this seat should go. Well, I'm in a car that has three lower anchor positions here on this bench seat. So meaning there are lower anchor connectors behind the driver, in the middle, and behind the passenger. That is unique in a lot of vehicles. So when you're looking at your vehicle and deciding where should your seat go, I obviously want you to take into consideration all those vehicle compatibility things that we just talked about, but also your lifestyle, what makes sense for your family. Any seating position is still perfectly safe. The most important thing is that you get a proper installation. 
For the sake of this video, I'm gonna be showing you the installation here behind the passenger side. So I have plenty of room to show you what we're doing. And again, this is a perfectly safe position to install this infant seat as well. Many new parents do install their infant seats behind the passengers so that the driver's room is not impacted at all. And a lot of times there's not a passenger in the passenger seat or the passenger can move the seat up forward and not interfere with the infant seat in any way. So again, up to you, proper installation is most important. Okay, so let's get this load leg fully extended. There's a little button here on it that allows you to extend it out and it will kind of click into place. Once it's in one of the click locations, that's how you know it's where it should be. So it's good. This little metal thing is going to pop out of one of these holes. And then um, you know that you are flush on the ground. And over here on this side, you have an indicator that turns from red to green. And that's how you also know that it's where it should be. So mine is actually, there we go. Now mine is in the proper position. You wanna make sure that when you extend that load leg, that it's not lifting up off the vehicle seat in any way. So let me just show you like, if I had it fully extended, you can see how it's lifting here off of the vehicle seat a bit. So don't extend it more than you have to. All right, we're green. We're locked in a position there. We're good to go. Now let's go ahead and attach these rigid lower anchor connectors. I pulled them out of their storage location like I showed you. I've got my lower anchor position in the car. Simply line it up. You're kind of gonna angle it. I like to reach my finger back in there, find the bar, you know, so I know what I'm shooting for. Click it in on one side, click it in on the other. Again, you've got a really nice feature here where an indicator right on the top of these rigid anchors goes from red to green, so you know you've got a secure attachment. That's that. The load leg is in place. Let's do a quick um, check to make sure that it's installed. So this is kind of the belt path here. You can see that it's not moving more than an inch in any direction. And then the final step is gonna to be to set this recline based on the size of my child. So for this one, like I said, we have four positions. Let's say we are gonna be expecting a newborn baby. So it's position one or two. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in position one. Again, you push this button down, kind of slide it to get where you want it to go. And now the base is installed with the rigid lower anchor connectors. Let's put the carrier on top. Putting the carrier on is relatively simple. I'm just gonna kind of line it up here. I tilt it downwards a little bit, click it into place. You hear an audible click when it goes in. I also want you to try to pull up here on the base and if it doesn't release, you know that it's locked. Do not panic if your seat wiggles a little bit when you put it in the base. So long as it is firmly planted in that base and does not easily come off when you pull up on this handle, that is expected and perfectly safe. There you go, seat fully installed. To get it off of the base, something I definitely want you to practice as well, is you're gonna push down, or actually you're pushing up on this lever here in the back. So you're gonna grab it and just take your baby on your way. Now, as I said, this seat is an exception to the rule where once you have the rigid lower anchor connectors in, if you would like to add the vehicle seat belt as well, you are able to lift this panel here there is a belt guide and it specifically notes where you route the lap belt versus where you route the shoulder belt, but both are under this little arm here. So buckle your vehicle belt in, get that lap belt where it's supposed to go. And then the shoulder belt goes up here, kind of up against the anti-rebound bar. And then you press down until it clicks in place. Seatbelt installation is up next. Let's get this base removed with the rigid lower anchor connectors. Also super simple. You're gonna depress these little buttons on the side of the rigid lower anchor connectors and just pull it out. That simple. To store them, rotate them backwards until they get back into that locked position. I'm gonna keep the load leg extended because I'm gonna obviously use it again for the seatbelt installation method. So why would you use seatbelt insulation method? You've heard me say, if you've been following along in this channel, and if you haven't, 
click that subscribe button. Make sure you like this video. We have so many great things to share with you beyond just installation of your car seat. If you have a car seat with rigid lower anchor connectors, I want you to use them. That for sure is kind of the preferred way, though both rigid lower anchor connectors and the vehicle seatbelt are equally safe installation methods. But the rigid lower anchors are just a really nice added feature. The reason that you may have to use a seatbelt installation could be because you have a really tight three across situation. And because these rigid lower anchor connectors extend like exactly where they're supposed to, you can't kind of shift the base on the seat in any way. When you have a vehicle seatbelt installation, you are able to kind of shimmy the seat one way or the other to get you those added inches that you might need in a really tight situation. The other reason you may use the seatbelt installation method is if you do want the seat in the middle seating position and you don't have lower anchor connectors in that position, then the vehicle seatbelt is often what we see used in a middle seating position. Again, both methods are safe, both are up to you. Let me show you how the seatbelt installation method is done. So same things as always, vehicle seat back in upright position. The base is gonna be flat on the vehicle seat. The load leg has been extended. And as a reminder, you're gonna push the button in, pull it down until this little metal part is in a secure position and the indicator reads green. There's an indicator on both sides and it's not lifting up the base in any way. So to do the vehicle seatbelt, you're gonna lift this little arm here for this seat, you've got a designated place where the lap belt routes and another one where the shoulder belt routes, but they're both underneath this little arm here. So grab your belt, buckle it in, get your lap belt routed through that guide, and then your shoulder belt's gonna lay right up here, sort of up against the anti-rebound bar. And you're gonna get like the easy slack out, okay? Nothing crazy, but pull it taut. Push this arm down, it'll click when it's done. Now we're gonna test for tightness at the belt path. This one's still moving a little bit more than I want it to, so no problem. Lift up the arm. Let's push down a little on the base. Oh yeah, got that lap belt a little tighter. Keep that shoulder belt routed where you're supposed to, and then push this arm down. If you can't get that arm down, like you're really working hard, you probably over tightened and you need to kind of unbuckle, reset the shoulder belt, shoulder and lap belt, do it again and don't pull so hard next time. But I was able to get this closed, no problem. Now let's, oh yeah, see like the difference, a little bit of movement before, now we're working with no movement at all. So it passes the test for tightness. I'm gonna double check. Oh, my load leg lifted a little bit. So I want you to see this because that happens all the time. So I did like the initial set of the load leg, but when I tightened the seat, my load leg shifted position. So I've got to get it back to where it's in that green zone. It's still not lifting off the vehicle seat in any way. This base is installed. Practice getting your carrier on and off the base as well. Pop it in here. For this particular infant seat, the handle is allowed to be in any locked position. This can vary based on your infant car seat, but for this one, you can move it into whatever little locked position that your heart desires. I usually put it more upright so it takes up less room here, front to back, right? Because if the handle is back here, then I've got a tighter amount of room to back this passenger seat up. So this is in, it may wobble a little bit on the base. That is totally fine, normal, and safe. What you're looking for is if you lift up on this handle, that it doesn't release from the base in any way. And that's how you know it is securely attached to the base. To release it, you're gonna pull up on this lever in the back and lift at the same time then you're on your way with your baby. If you're still watching this video, first I wanna say thank you. I know this stuff is highly technical and dare I say a little bit boring, but we wanna make sure you have all the details of how to safely install your seat. And on this channel, we have so many other things, including how to buckle in a newborn baby. And if you're in this stage, you need to know how to do that. So I linked it here for you. Make sure you check out that video. And while you're at it, just subscribe to the page. 
like the video, even drop a comment below. We try our best to answer as many as we can. All right, third installation method is European routing, which no, it does not have to be used just in Europe. What it means is that the shoulder belt is gonna route behind the carrier portion of the car seat. There is a belt guide right here. It's nice and bright blue for you so you know what it's for. The shoulder belt's gonna go through here to help us secure the carrier into the vehicle. So, and you know, the other thing I wanna say about this, people ask all the time, this is a very safe installation method as well. So you don't just have to use the base to get a safe installation with your carrier. For those of you that are on the go all the time and needing to pop the seat in and out of Ubers or rideshare, this is a really great option and having a European belt path makes it all the better. So let's do it. Grab that shoulder belt. There are belt guides here also marked with some blue, that's where the lap belt is gonna route. So your baby's gonna be buckled up in here while you're routing this belt. Yes, it's gonna go over their legs, no problem. Buckle it in and then take your shoulder belt portion, extend it all the way, it's probably gonna come all the way out when you do this and pull it back behind your seat taking that shoulder belt and placing it in that shoulder belt guide as you go. And then I don't know if you can hear that, but that ratcheting sound means my shoulder belt was pulled out far enough that it automatically locked. If for any reason you have an extra long shoulder belt and it didn't do that, pull that extra webbing out to get it in locking mode. So we've kind of got it in here, but you can tell this seat is not tightly installed in any way. So now we have to tighten things up. I want you to get that recline indicator at that parallel, parallel with parallel ground, <laughs> level with parallel, I don't even know how to say that, level with the ground. I want you to get it level with flat ground. There we go, we've got it. You'd think I've never said this before. All right, so take that blue line, get your initial adjustment. You can do this before you put the seatbelt on as well, but I kind of like doing it now when it's sort of initially like step one installed. So let's tighten things up. I tend to get my body in this position just naturally when I am using this type of insulation method. So I kind of reach up and over the seat. I'm gonna separate that shoulder belt from the lap belt. I'm gonna pull it back in the direction of my body while my body is pushing the carrier into the vehicle seat back. So here we go. Pull, the goal here you can see is this lap belt is getting a little bit tighter. So I'm wiggling, I'm pushing, my belt's already locked, so don't lose this work you did. Feed it up into your other hand and back into that retractor. Let's check that level line again. If things shifted, then shimmy the seat. Kind of dig your hand back by where your kiddo's feet are, is. Mine's level, but I'm gonna show you this anyways. So you would literally just work to kind of shimmy it up or down, but looks darn good to me. And let's do, oh yeah. I just love when I do it the first time <laughs> it's tight. I mean, I might be a little out of breath talking to you, but, but we did it. A nice tight installation with European belt path routing is done. Let me know in the comments if this video was helpful and you feel really confident about the three different ways to install the Nuna Pippa. I hope you do. As a reminder, installation is only part of the equation. To keep your baby safe in the seat, you also have to focus on harnessing. As I said, we have a ton of resources for you on our channel about that. A couple of things to note specifically about harnessing for this seat. There is a body insert, so an actual insert that you put into the seat. If, when you pull it out of the box, it should already be in there. That can be used up until your child is 11 pounds. There also is a head piece and that has specific rules for use too, meaning it has to be in the top two slots and not coming out of the same slot as the harness straps. This stuff is all detailed in your manual. We also have these little handy dandy printable stickers that you can use. You print them out, you fill it out with all these types of details from installation and harnessing on here and then stick it to the side of your seat so that it's kind of an in-your-face reminder that you need to adjust things as you go. Thanks again for following along. I hope you found this helpful. Subscribe to the channel before you leave. See you later.